Hello everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started with creating PDFs in your .NET applications very, very easily. And I think the library we're going to showcase in this video today is actually an amazing case study in developer experience because it solves all the things, in my opinion, that makes this sort of thing pretty hard to do. PDF creation in general is a total pain in where you, you know where and it usually revolves around having wrappers around other low level libraries and so on but in this video we're going to see how easy it can be if you like that content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe and for more training check out my courses on dometrain.com okay so let me show you what i have here and actually what i'm going to do in this video is actually just show you how we can build a very simple pdf page and we're going to do that by using a library called Quest PDF. Now, there are other libraries that can sort of create PDFs or convert them from, let's say, HTML to PDFs. But Quest PDF has a very, very nice developer experience on creating them through a Fluent API, which I personally really like. And it suits my use cases when I'm creating PDFs, especially for invoices and stuff like that programmatically. Now, you can install Quest PDF by simply searching for Quest PDF on NuGet and then installing the latest version. And once you have that, you can start working with it in any C Sharp or .NET context. Now, there's a few things I want to mention. First and foremost, Quest PDF is an open source library, so please use the link in the description if you like what you're going to see in this video and give it a star because it really, really helps the developers working on this product. Also, they have sponsorships enabled. So if you want to support the project financially, then you can do it either monthly or with a one-time payment. Now, I've personally decided that every time I'm showcasing a library, an open source project on my YouTube videos, if they have sponsorships enabled, I will go ahead and do a one-time payment. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and donate a one-time donation of $250. Here we go, we have sponsored now the project, and if you want to do the same, then all the details are in the description. The other thing I want to mention is that Quest PDF actually has a pricing model, a licensing model. It is free for developers for up to a million dollars in annual gross revenue, but then if you're a company with up to 10 developers, you should pay $500 per year, which is basically nothing if you're making the type of money, and $2,000 a year for an unlimited amount of developers. These are insanely small numbers and I have nothing against libraries that actually have a pricing model. In fact, I recommend it because we make OSS sustainable that way. Now with all that out of the way, let's go straight into the implementation of creating a PDF and explain why I think Quest PDF is so, so cool. Now, the first thing we need to do in your applications when you're using something like this is you actually have to specify what type of license you're using in the application. And to do that, I'm going to say Quest PDF settings and then license, and I'm going to select the community license over here. The moment we do that, we're able to use it in our applications. There's no checking of a license key in our system. Quest PDF sort of trusts you that you're going to do the right thing. And if you need to use um, an enterprise or a professional license, you will do that. Now, let's say we want to build a PDF. Well, all we have to do to get started, is say document and then use the Fluent API and say create. The moment we do that, we have access to a container. And in this top level container, we can specify anything about our PDF. Now, in the end, you have a couple of options of what you want to do with this PDF. For example, you can just generate a PDF or you can generate an XPS file as well. We're going to say generate PDF or images. But the coolest thing about this library is that you can actually have a previewer, a way to see how your PDF will look as you're building it. And you can do that by saying show in previewer. Now to install the previewer, you have to install a global tool. This is very easy to do. You just go to your console and you say .NET tool install quest PDF dot previewer and then global specifying that this is a global tool. The moment you do that, it's going to be downloaded and installed in your system and then you're able to use the previewer. So this will look something like this. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the terminal actually and I'm going to say .NET watch to have hot reload kick in as I'm building my application. And what's going to suddenly appear is actually an extra window. Let's wait for it. Here you go. This is a Quest PDF previewer. We're going to see the page we're building and the PDF we're building as we're building it. It's so, so cool. So I'm going to separate my PDF viewer and my ID so you can see both on the same page. So now that I have both, let's go ahead and start building our page. So first I'm going to say container and then page to create my page. And then I'm going to give this descriptor an alias, call it page and start building it. So the moment I save, as you can see, hot reload kicks in and now we have a view 
of the page over here. I should be able to just zoom in a bit so you can see it better. First, I'm going to say page dot size to specify a size, and we can specify the page size using page sizes dot, and you can say A4, so paper A4, A0, 1, 2, 3, and a bunch of different other sizes. We're just going to say A4 here, assuming we want to make something that we want to print. Now, right below, I'm going to say page dot header, and I'm going to create a header. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is I want some text. That text should be hello from Rider. Again, the moment I save, you can see that the header actually just appears up here now, and everything happens in real time. Now, I can customize the text, so I can say I want this to be uh, semi bold, for example, and the moment I save that, you can see the change. Then I want to specify a font size of 30, and everything is customizable here. So you can also say like font color and say colors dot, I don't know, amber for some reason, and you can use the medium type of amber. Well, this doesn't show great in the video, so maybe change that for something like, um, I don't know, yellow? That's even worse, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, I'm just gonna go with classic blue. That's better. But now this is a bit on the top left corner and nothing really happens. So let's go ahead and give a bit of structure on our page. So we're going to go above this and I'm going to say page dot margin and I'm going to give it a margin of two with the unit being either centimeters, feet for some reason. Uh, I guess if you're printing stuff, it makes sense. An uh, inch, meter, millimeter or point. I'm going to say two centimeters. And as you can see, this now moves it in two centimeters on an A4 page. Other things I can do is page color. So I can say that I want this to be colors dot uh, white over here. And I want to set a default text style over here. So I'm going to say font size 20 as the default font size. Then let's move into the content of the page. So I'm going to say page dot content. And that's the main thing of the page. So I'm going to add some padding. I'm going to say padding vertical. And you have other types of padding as well if you want to. So I'm just going to say padding you know, top left horizontal, whatever. I'm just going to say one centimeter and then i'm going to create a column in that column i can add multiple things for example i can have some spacing i'm going to say 20 and the default 20 is point you can change that to anything you want like centimeters and so on and i'm going to just add a couple of items in my pdf so the first item i want to add is text and you actually have access to a bunch of placeholders if you want to. So for example, you have lorem ipsum, image, color, integer, email. So if I say email, for example, and I save, you see a random emailing appear here. I'm just going to say lorem ipsum. And the moment I save, lorem ipsum appears. And the other thing I can add is, I guess, an image. And again, I'm going to use a placeholder of an image. And I'm going to say... Uh, 200 by 100 and you see a randomly generated image appears here so you see how i'm starting to build my page and structure my page now the last thing pdfs usually have is a footer so i'm going to say page dot footer over here and i'm going to say align center because i want to have the page number in the center of my pdf so i'm going to say that the text here is actually a span with text page and a space and then follow that up with the page number so get current page number. And that's it. Maybe my face hides it, but as you can see now on the bottom over here, we now have the page number. And the more pages we have, the more we're going to add here. Now you can understand how with this way of programmatically generating the PDF, you can do basically anything. The page object has anything you will ever need from the content, the defaults, the margins, the continuous sizes, things like this, maximum size, minimum size. It's very, very customizable and very, very extensible. I've been trying to solve this problem for my business myself and Quest PDF for what I've seen and what I've tried is the best experience for my use case of generating PDFs in that way. Now, this is just a way to get started with. There's tons of examples on the Quest PDF GitHub repo on how you can generate invoices and a bunch of different other stuff. And the preview is what's the game changer for me because being able to change everything in real time makes things so, so easy. Of course, it goes without saying, but if you want to actually generate a PDF, you can easily do that by saying generate PDF. And I'm going to give it a name called test.pdf, save. And then if I quickly just uh, run this, then as you're going to see, I have a Quest PDF object created over here. And if I open it on my browser, that PDF 
is then created and that's exactly what you should expect for your application as well. I think Quest PDF is a great library. I really don't mind the license. In fact, I really like that it does have a license, meaning that it can be a sustainable project and I highly recommend it to every one of you. But now I want to know from you, what are you using to generate your PDFs? And do you prefer the Iron PDF approach of creating them? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.